So maybe we should rewind um, a few weeks before it and, and ask about whether or not you think that it's, you ever, whether you thought it was possible. This th sub three hours is always your goal. Um, to be honest, no, I didn't actually think I could do it because um, I, I mentioned it like it was like five weeks out or six weeks out. And I was like, this goal is really hard. Like I'm really taking on such a massive goal. And I kept getting reminded of my previous marathon time. Which was? Three minutes, uh, three, three minutes, <laughs> nice. three hours and 32 minutes. And it was like, I have to shave 32 minutes off of PB. And wow. It's like, Welcome to the Running Channel podcast with me, Andy Badley, my co-host, Sarah Hartley, Rick Kelsey over there pushing the buttons. Hopefully they're working this week. And a very special guest this week. We're joined by the Running Channel's very own Mo. And that's going to be what we're talking about this episode, isn't it, Sarah? Yes, we are going to be talking about Mo's recent run where he managed to break three hours for a marathon. If you haven't watched the full video on YouTube yet, go and watch that. But we're going to be getting all of the juicy gossip that we couldn't fit into the main YouTube video. Yeah, let's get stuck in. Welcome, Mo. Thank you so much. Can't wait. So before we dive into Mo being great, I have a bone <laughs> to pick with you, Andy. Oh, we're starting already. We're, already, we're less than a minute in. Yeah, and I am annoyed at you. Uh, you're always annoyed you're at me. Entering... What, are you, what are you particularly annoyed about me this well, time? Well, this sp specific one, you're entering the world of social media. I tagged you in something over the weekend and you ignored it. You yeah, tagged... He doesn't know how to reply. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> did, did you even see that I tagged you no, in something? No, I didn't, no. Oh my God. There what is a knock-on effect though, Sarah, what? to all this. There is a big knock-on effect. You tagged him in something. Yeah. But the fact all this tagging is happening with Andy because we are directing people to Andy. Yeah. To on, get on my Instagram to, because to you, you his followers desperately yes, yeah, yeah. want me to post. But the yeah. knock-on effect is that me and you are accumulatively getting more followers. Not a word. What did I say? Accumulatively. Accumulatively. Cumulatively. Together. Cumulatively. Oh, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you getting more followers? Don't, but yeah, we're, we're getting them because of the knock-on effect. Yeah. Hang on, as in Andy's getting more followers or we're getting more followers? Yeah, so people are now looking up, Googling who is Andy from the Running, running Channel. Yeah. yeah. But then they then find us too. Yeah, I know. So okay. there is a knock-on effect. So it's not yeah, all one-way traffic. Uh, anyone that's listening or watching, the, the, for extra context, just in case you're new to the Running Channel podcast, Sarah and Rick are dragging me kicking and screaming into the social media age. Hey, uh, hey, hey, um, you wanted this. Well, I'm massively you're regretting entering any, your diva era. any participation I'm massively regretting. Um, I'm at Rumbadders on Instagram. We're trying to get me to 5,000 followers so that then I'll be forced into posting stuff. Um, and yeah, we're approaching... 2000, I think. Yeah, I've definitely over 1500 in the Whoa, last week or so. Incredible. I know. Yeah. Mr. Incredible. Micro Influencer Rick in the is corner. So upset here. By it. He's I, trying to pretend on camera happens, now that he's not upset. What are you on, Rick? What happens when Andy overtakes you? I'm on two and a half, and Ooh. it's taken me, what, yeah. six years or something to get there? <laughs> but it's not like I'm. He's, I'm, not, he's fine with it, though. <laughs> I've, I've never been bothered. I've never even looked. I never even knew how many followers I had, genuinely, Ooh, until recently. That but sounds now. sounds like someone who cares. It yeah. really does. I don't care. I don't care about the following. I'm well, fine. Let's. let's <laughs> That's, you, oh my gosh. I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of stick here. Let's steer this away from me and onto you, Sarah. How's your running be going? You're shifting uncomfortably in your chair because you've hurt your back. Right? I, okay, so you know the gym journey I was going on. This is really embarrassing that Mo's here. Have you started the gym, the gym journey yet? Have you, have you even got on the gym bus yet? No. So I, I am neither a member of a gym, <laughs> nor have I been to the gym in the last two weeks. However, I am a member of a body weight, like online thing. <laughs> What? <laughs> Sorry, a body weight online thing. Back, back online to, back body to weight training back exercises. To Do you want to Basically, try that word? Accumative? <laughs> Accumatively. You know, that really easy word to yeah. say. Did I get it right? Yeah. Accumatively. Yeah, you did it. Yeah. Accumulatively. Anyway, get back to it. <laughs> right. So I basically need to go to the gym because I got some wardrobes delivered yesterday and merely moving the wardrobe into my flat, yeah. I've put my back out and I feel about 95. Oh. And sitting in this Welcome chair, to my world. Anyone, <laughs> anyone who is listening to this now, you should know that this is incredibly uncomfortable. Well, they're very comfortable chairs, I think. Mate. They, they are very comfortable. They're not chairs. when you're like every movement hurts. And she's I made absolutely even, zero fuss about this today as well. <laughs> yeah, I can't even put hasn't my mentioned socks it on once. This yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Well, what I actually had beef with was the fact that over the weekend I went on a run. Yeah. Whilst ill as oh, well, yeah. which well, I would not yeah. recommend. Don't we try people not back. to do that? Yeah, well, so I was, I felt a lot better. And then I went on a run, looked at my heart rate and was like, this is a terrible idea. Yeah. So stopped it early, went super slow. But on that run, I got to a set of traffic lights as per a previous podcast, if you've listened to it yeah. and paused my watch ah. because it's a long set of traffic lights. Yeah. Then because I was going on an easy run, I was coming back from a bit of illness. I was trying yeah. to test the waters. I didn't want to look at the pace. So yeah. I wasn't really looking at my watch. So you didn't start your watch again. 
I didn't start my watch oh, again. Oh, see, but... you're on my team now. Mm. Don't pause your watch. No. <laughs> she then and tagged you, know you, Andy. Yeah, and I tagged uh, and you, you and didn't called respond. you out and you didn't respond. Yeah. So I'm uh, going to say that I'm still winning this argument, but I lost a kilometre Would it have my run. But but I'm the one who says don't pause your watch. Yeah, I so know. I don't know what you'd have been calling me out for. But No, I... I was calling you out saying that you were right. Oh, tremendous. Well, that's excellent. <laughs> Let's just stop tremendous. there. Tremendous. <laughs> Wow. Okay. On to you, Andy. How's your week of running been? Um, it's, I don't even know what's happening anymore. I've, I've lost the will to live a little bit, but um, <laughs> my, my, my running's been good. I did the Wings for Life World Run on Sunday. Nice. Um, we were down at Battersea Park hosting as a running channel. Rick was the most incredible hype man ever. Anyone that's familiar with Mr. Motivator, Motivator from the 90s, that's basically what Rick was. Accumulatively, it was an amazing day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. We need to have a word about this. Um, yeah, it was brilliant. We saw so many amazing people. For anyone that doesn't know, it's a run that supports uh wings for life which is a spinal cord charity uh it's backed by red bull they pay for all the operating costs for the charity so that's a really cool thing that the anything that they raise all goes to the research so there's lots of people there that were running but also because the notion is you're kind of running for those who can't but then there were plenty of other people there on, on crutches or in, in wheelchairs that were also um moving around in order to, to cover the distance and outrun the catcher car which starts 30 minutes after you start ours was an app run so it wasn't a real life car chasing us down in battersea park but yeah, just the most amazing positive running experience, which is really cool. And the, the, the catcher car, how it works is Jerry Hallowell. Yes, that Jerry, Jerry Hallowell. Hornen, Jerry Hornen. Jerry Hornen out yeah. off of the Spice Girls yeah. is in your ear saying the catcher car is coming and you hear it revving as it gets closer towards I know. you. I've done it before and there is literally nothing more. I've done it both as the app oh. and then last year I went out to, I think it was Vienna, Vienna where, yeah. what, where the like live thing is. And both are equally as terrifying. You would think that one would be more scary than the other, but no, having a car in your ear, terrifying. And having, having a, a real car. Because also it's not in Vienna, it's not one car. I went out there and I was like, okay, they catch a car. No, no, is it's it like catching cars. cars. Yeah. It's, it's like a procession yeah. that comes past you. And also you have to get out, like obviously they're not going to run you over, but you have to get out of the way of the car yeah. because they're all driving in one line. So you have to get overtaken basically and move out. So scary. Oh, I see. And so the, it scary. speeds up as well. So on Sunday, it starts at 14 kilometers an hour after 30 minutes and yeah. it speeds up depending on how long you last up till up to 34 kilometers an hour. Yeah, that's pretty fast by then. I think that's just to make sure they if catch you're, people. If you're still going at, you know, yeah. about a th about three hour mark, three hours, yeah. 20 mark, I think they caught the last guy. And in London, we had 300 people there. And the guy who won it in London uh, did, I think, 44 yeah. kilometers. Yeah, 44, 45, 45 kilometers. kilometers. So yeah, how, more than a marathon. Uh, how long did you last, Andy? Uh, long enough, <laughs> long enough, Sarah. Are you not revealing it? I can't remember how much distance I did. Probably I about I can't remember. Some an hour, an hour and a half. Between an hour, an hour and a half. Did you do that long? Well, that went by quick. About fourteen k, something like that. Oh right, it's not quite impressive. Um, Very nice. Yeah. Mo, Ch you didn't didn't get involved after running a marathon the week before. I did not. No, I didn't. <laughs> I went to see them though. I I did see Silly Andy and Rick, and uh, I gave them words of encouragement. Is what I did. <laughs> Very but you're, nice. you're in a very unique position because you've also been the car. Oh yes, I have ago. been yes. the car. No, I've very smugly been the car. So we made a video on the running channel last year um, to kind of help support the the cause and, and and let people know about the Wings for Life World Run itself. And yes, yeah, Sarah got to drive this most incredible 250 grand uh, Range Rover, <laughs> yeah, but a Land Rover that was kitted out. That from, was also from terrifying because I got in it having only in my life ever driven a VW Polo and a Ford Focus. And yeah. the guy was like, oh, so what's your experience of driving, you know, trucks and vans? And I was like, zero, literally zero. <laughs> and the that. first thing he said was like, if you turn the corner too sharply, this will roll. Oh, I but mean, I don't think yeah. he really knew my personality type because I then drove the car at like one mile an hour <laughs> and he had, to, he had to eventually be like, you know, you can go to second gear. But you were, <laughs> but you were there in this big car in the warmth with, with heated seats. With heated seats, yeah. So yeah. You were going to yeah. roll that one out. And then Mo and I were out there on the track at Goodwood, this was, in genuinely the worst weather of everyone yeah, in my life. Yeah, it was life. awful. You guys were soaked. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and hail, it was, I had to stop yeah, at one point because yeah, yeah. it hurt too much to, to move. But... Yeah. Excellent segue. That was actually Mo's first ever video for the running channel. Precisely. So maybe we should give a little bit of context as to why you're here today and then let's get stuck in because this is what I really want to find out about. Um, Mo has recently t attempted to tick off one of your kind of bucket list running goals, which mm -hmm. is to run a sub three hour marathon. Yep. Um, we teamed up with Under Armour for that. So we'll come on to that a little bit later on. But basically we wanted to talk to you and find out about that experience and how it went basically on the day. So that was actually my last ever video for the running channel. <laughs> <laughs> no, That's it, hey, we're done now. Yeah. 
<laughs> took my goals it. off. Um, it. No, it was it was such an incredible day. Like honestly, I can't even put into words like how it felt to cross the line um, in the time that I did, but yeah. just cross the line in general after training for it for so long. It was a surreal experience. And then obviously seeing you, seeing everyone there was just wild. Yeah, I took my uh, son, one of my- One of them. One, one, of, them, one, of, one, one of my sons. Just did ip dip do. <laughs> yeah, ip dip do, yeah, that's how we do it at home. Um, I took Sam and we were both on our bikes cycling madly between these places. And he, he was so excited about it that literally for the next few days, whenever I took him to um, school or, or we bumped into other parents and they were like, oh, what did you do at the weekend, Sam? He's like, I watched Mo run a marathon. <laughs> um, he was absolutely buzzing with it. So maybe we should rewind um, a few weeks before it and, and ask about whether or not you think that it's, you were, whether you thought it was possible. This th sub three hours is always your goal. Um, to be honest, no, I didn't actually think I could do it because um, I, I mentioned it like, it was like five weeks out or six weeks out. And I was like, this goal is really hard. Like I'm really taking on such a massive goal. And I kept getting reminded of my previous marathon time. Which was? Three minutes, uh, three, three minutes, <laughs> nice. three hours and 32 minutes. And it was like, I have to shave 32 minutes off of PB. And wow. It's like, because was it hard as well? Because that, that previous time that you ran wasn't like an all out, at like after a training block either. Yeah, no, it wasn't. It was literally because um, I just needed to run a marathon to feel like what the distance felt like. So I went by myself on a random <laughs> I Sunday morning. just needed to run one. <laughs> Had to go out and run. In yeah, Hyde Park, yeah. It was lockdown, wasn't it? It was when in you the middle in? of lockdown, yeah, precisely. Um, and the only fuel I had was uh, a bar of Snickers and LucasAid that my brother gave me about halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> so um, going from that, which is like not, not, optimal, not optimal marathon prep or execution, all. to then going into something where you've got you're gonna have paces on the day you've got a, a coach you've got Under Armour backing you as well did it feel like did it feel like a lot of pressure or did it feel like okay actually half an hour is achievable because I've come from a bit, <laughs> a bit of both everything. honestly it felt one I felt like an athlete which isn't like a normal feeling to feel I felt like I felt like Andy um I'm sure <laughs> yes that's like, the nicest thing anyone's ever said on other the podcast. athletes are available uh, no. <laughs> but it was like I yeah I can finally like structure my training properly have the the right paces have the right fueling strategy have everything there for me so it was like it is such a massive goal for me but it was it was within like sight once i ticked off the full 16 weeks of training yeah. i'd gotten the coach i'd gotten tried the shoes on and it was just like all i needed to do was just go out and do it um was there any one particular session where you went from thinking like oh this is pretty fast to like oh okay maybe Probably the time I'd done half marathon pace for about 21, well, for I mean, marathon pace for a half marathon. Nice. And that, that just felt like, okay, cool. I just need to double this, but I wasn't wrecked at the end of the half. So I was like, okay, cool. It's within, it's within reason. Mm. Um, and, and what would you say, we've spoken about this like off air, I suppose, mm -hmm. um, that what, how would you compare the structure of your training pre and post getting some coaching input, I guess, like what changed? Um, so uh, like, don't wing it. If you're going for a big goal like this, do not wing your training. Um, and I, <laughs> Were was, you winging winging it? It? Yeah. I was winging it for quite a while. Like ultimately I was like, as long as I get two track sessions in two relatively long runs and like a tempo session, I'll be fine. Um, and you weren't really thinking about what those sessions were, right? You were just joining with other people's stuff. Whatever the session was given on the day, it was yeah. the one I'd do. And whatever people were like long running, I'd just join them for it. Um, there was no like actual structure for it. <laughs> I did not but know that. That's your style, right. mate. That, that is, is your yeah. style, uh, isn't it? Yeah. Just, I mean, you know, turn up to a park if anyone's are, running, no, bring, you... bring your beatbox, as you, I saw you on Sunday, mm -hmm. and just run. That's exactly You are I literally was. Mr. Run Club. Like if you <laughs> if you go to a run club in London, Mo most probably, there. Yeah, yeah, most yeah, probably yeah. there. I go to like every single Yeah, yeah. What, what are you training for today, Mo? Oh, I don't know, 5K? What, what are you training for <laughs> two days later? What are you training for today? Uh, this is a marathon session. Yeah, no, it was literally, so it was, it was a lot of wing sessions and a lot of like, I didn't know exactly what I was going to do, but I knew that the mileage was slowly building up. But whether the pace was, I couldn't tell you until... Yeah, because you actually went through. So the the day before the marathon, we put out um, a video on Instagram, I think, that had like your accumulative oh. mileage. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I think, well, we were, again, we were just talking about this off mic. Cumulative or accumulative? Yeah, cumulative. Right into a podcast at the running channel.com <laughs> to make sure you sort our grammar out. Yeah, there were some good English teachers that emailed him before. Oh, was, there, <laughs> was there really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. To varying degrees of disgust. Okay, well, <laughs> which I'm, is fair I'm, enough. I'm really sorry. Please be mm. nice. Um, yeah, we were talking about your like cumulative mileage and you added it up from looking at all of your stats yeah. and like there was... <laughs> 
for the five weeks leading up to the marathon, perfect. You were working with a coach, amazing. Before that, some weeks yeah. it was like off the off the scale. <laughs> the next week, like it was in yeah, it was insane. You were even looking at your phone, going like, "Wow, what happened that week? Why did I run so much?" Yeah, it literally. So it went from like five hundred and six hundred kilometers in January and February to like targeted actually decent mileage. Yeah, where the training was, and I gave myself enough time to rest, and it was just yeah, it kind of all narrowed like funneled in my training to to nail in exactly what I needed to do and it, it paid off. Yeah, and I think having someone that takes that pressure off you for kind of organizing your training is the yeah. thing that makes a massive difference, always made a massive difference to me. You feel like, well, I'm doing the right thing because someone else is telling me what to do. Yeah. And then you, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I guess how much confidence did that give you ahead of actually doing the race that like, oh, I, this, this person knows what they're doing. It, like, it gave me all the confidence that I needed because like it took the pressure off knowing if I'm doing enough training for the yeah. day. It's like, Andy's such a great coach and he's done this before. So if he knows how to get me to a sub three, well, if anyone knew how to get me to a sub three, it'd be him. Yeah. So the fact that he, I just needed to do the sessions that he gave me yeah. meant that I didn't need to worry about whether it would be enough for the day or not, because I knew it would be. Um, and I'm yeah, sure and it takes, yeah, it takes away that, I think whether it's a, a coach who you can actually text and be like, is this gonna be okay? Yeah, yeah. Or whether it's like a training plan or a coaching app, just having something where you're like, right, I've ticked this or yeah. done. I think self coaching, it. I don't know how some people do it to varying degrees of success, but I don't know how, because for me, there's always that element of like, oh, I, I feel okay. Should I go out and do another run? Or yeah. like, should I go to the gym or should I, I don't know that I feel like your brain is always gonna tell you to do more, especially when you know that the goal itself is so hard because yeah. that was one other thing I wanted to talk about as well. So out of your paces or like your friends, you obviously supported loads of them <laughs> the week before at London Marathon. Yeah. How many of them went for sub three and then narrowly missed it? So it was, I believe three of them were going for a sub three the week before. So they um, did it at London, then you did yours at, at Milton Keynes Marathon, right? Yeah, exactly. And all three of them are faster runners than me or stronger than runners than me. And none of them got sub three. So a week out, my, my like my brain was going crazy. Yeah, thinking, I spoke I... to you in between the two and you were like, that was the first time you'd gone, oh gosh, this yeah. is like... I was like, okay, maybe it's, it's a lot tougher than I thought yeah. it would be. Yeah. Um, but and then again, the conditions in London weren't the greatest that day. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah it was, it was we... pretty wet. Yeah. So it, and at the start as well, which is quite hard because then you're just soggy. For they, you don't have the, the whole obviously the soggy. elites run fast, but they have the advantage of having like they're, they're, they don't hang around on the start line for ages. They they have kind of that hospitality to keep them warm and dry and people to take their kit and all that sort of stuff. And then yeah. they just get yeah. into it and then they're only out there for two hours. So mm. And also I feel like there's a, there's a massive um, mindset thing of like, you know that when you get to the end of a marathon, you're going to have to like walk for a little bit or like go find your bag. Whereas I'm guessing as well for an elite, they know that they're getting like a towel within 0.2 <laughs> seconds yeah. and then are going to be like whisked away as well. I don't know whether that's just me. I'm always thinking about like <laughs> how long before I can sit down. <laughs> it depends how mile. fast about I run. another mile. Yeah, yeah it's really yeah. long. But then if you think about it, there are 50,000 people running. So it has to be. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. But yeah. On, on race day, let's talk, talk through that. Like mm -hmm. I suppose to give people extra context, do check out the video because it's, it's really cool and gives you a real insight into the kind of emotion of the day. Mm. Um, but um, Mo had four paces. Um, we'd had Milton Keynes Marathon is, is, is a relay marathon as well. So you can run the whole distance or you can have uh, a team of four people swapping in and, and doing it. Um, so they'd given us permission to have people come onto the course and kind of basically pace you. So you had four paces and you kind of specially chosen people that you trusted right yeah no definitely and actually the order in which i got them as well was like so important to me um but having the people there like to pace you just felt amazing because i know initially we were going to go with just one person to pace me the whole yeah. way and then we found out that we can relay and it was yeah. it, i think it worked a little bit better because ultimately i just had to i got a, like a burst of fresh energy Every time you got every, a new pacer. Every new pacer. And they, you know, their form wouldn't break down over 10K, whereas over a marathon, someone's form nice. might break down. Yeah. So it's like having just had to match their cadence and having them just speak to me the whole time, whereas I didn't have to like, well, you, you, if you watch the You're video, had a fresh hype man. A fresh every, hype man. Every, every yeah, six yeah. miles. Every single time. I feel like as well, every, it was what, like 45 minutes that you were with each one? Yeah, which like isn't really take. long enough to get annoyed at someone. No, 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 I mean? no, no, no. Like just all. as they're starting to grate on you slightly, you can be like, swap. Yeah. <laughs> next. next. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, that, that sounds like Sarah speaking from experience. So yeah, Andy for a whole 10K. <laughs> yeah, because I have paced Sarah before and you really don't like it, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I do and I don't. It depends. Yeah, yeah. 
yeah. think I think the idea of like offloading the pace to someone, especially me being like like super hypercritical yeah. of my own pace, it yeah. was difficult to do because like I have to just have to trust them to to look after this marathon for me, and they did. But it was like I kind of wanted to check my watch like every two minutes just to see if I was still on track. <laughs> I was like, I, need to I think that's good though. Me. Like you have to you have to have that amount of trust as well. But like if you if you weren't wanting to check, then it showed then like you you wouldn't care. You know yeah. what I mean? It shows that you care. One thing that was also really cool is that because it was a relay the night before with all the paces, we were looking up what the relay winning time was. Oh, yeah. And we were so <laughs> confident that they had a chance of winning, <laughs> but they did not. No, there was a not. really, really fast relay team. So well done to whoever won that. Next year, though. Yeah, next, next year. Next year we'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> So we've been lucky enough that this entire project's been supported by Under Armour. And actually, we should talk about the shoes because a few months ago, I got to go out to Portugal to meet some of the team behind it, which actually included one of the people I used to train with way back in 2012. Shh, I know, that's a long time ago. Um, <laughs> but we're, we're talking about the... Uh, 2012, when, when was that? Oh, Millennia. Well, oh, was, wasn't that the last time you posted on Instagram? Oh, yes. <laughs> Excellent segue. <laughs> don't forget to follow me at Run Badass. No, don't, actually. Sorry, I, I keep forgetting, forgetting whether I want He's people to or not. He's confusing himself yeah. now, isn't he? <laughs> that please please don't make me famous. Please yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm just I'm protesting too much. Um, the shoes are right behind Mo, uh, for anyone watching on the, on the video. Um and they are the Flow Velocity Elite. So they were really late to the party with a, we love talking about super shoes or I do, with a carbon plated racer. Um, and I know that when we talked to you about this project, you were like a little bit nervous because you obviously hadn't had a chance to try them. Mm -hmm. So how did you how did you find them, I guess? Um, I mean, I was definitely on the fence when you told me about yeah. it. It's like my biggest goal and you want me to put my trust in something that's just reached the market. But yeah, I had tested them though. At least it wasn't a complete blind faith. Yeah, right? yeah, so yeah. I, was, I, I was pretty confident. But. So of course, then you started giving me the facts of, you know, they've won New York Marathon and yeah. then you've run in them and you found them that like the faster you go, the easier it gets to run in them. Yeah. And when I put them on for the first time, I felt exactly the same. Like, um, I don't know if that was placebo because you'd instantly- Yeah, because I, I planted that seed, <laughs> right? Yeah. But genuinely, like they, well, they'd done the job. They got me over the line in, yeah. in sub three hours and I felt really, really good running in them. Uh, obviously my paces were running them as well and yeah. I've only seen them running them since. So, so they're still it's running only, them. It's only been a week, but yeah, yeah. I've seen them running them since. So it's like the, the, the shoes definitely do the job. They do what they needed to do. Oh, um, nice. And they're very fast shoes. They also looked so cool on the day as well. Like I know that I know that's not necessarily going to give everything. you, sp <laughs> it gives gives you speed. speed, but it was so cool. So I was out on a bike tracking you and every single time we like lost you or like you got hidden behind different groups, it was so easy to catch up with you because we were like just looking for that fluorescent green. The brighter the shoes, the faster you go. It's so like good. science. Yeah, I always yeah. used to... In that case, I, everyone will go fast. The starting line now at any race <laughs> is just a who's who of super shoes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally, it, it's the, the, the colours on the start line I noticed at the weekend. Absolutely bonkers, aren't they? It's, they're so cool. Yeah. I love it. So bright. So, yeah. so, so bright. You definitely want to stand out. Fluorescent green, did the job. Um, so there's the shoes. But then sort of almost to rewind, like you did a vast majority or a large chunk of your training during Ramadan as well. Like, and that blows my mind because of the, the you know, the time of the year and the type of training that you needed to do and the fact that you couldn't eat or drink during such a large chunk of the like the, the day. Yeah, I think that, that definitely gave me a bit more like um, motivation as well, knowing that I was able to hit the paces and distances without fuel. Yeah. Um, and then the fact that uh, I was then we pushed to Milton Keynes Marathon, which gave me like a week after Ramadan to properly carb load. Yeah, because um, you had had a plan to run London originally, right? Yeah. Like way back. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then when we pushed it, it was like, okay, beautiful. This gives me like an extra week because we didn't know if Ramadan was going to land on London Marathon or not. Yeah. Um, because <coughs> obviously the moon and stuff. So it was it gave it gave me a chance to know that I'd have enough recovery, enough rest, and enough food leading up to the marathon, which ultimately gave me you know the winning hand. I think. And it affects everything, mate, doesn't it? Because it also affects your sleep because you've got to get up to eat in the middle of the night. Yeah, sleep was out the window. So I didn't actually go to sleep, then wake up to eat. I just stay awake. So the, the one time I would sleep would be like straight after eating in the middle of the night mm. and trying to eat. I mean, trying to sleep on a full stomach is not ideal. Mm. Um, and that. it's a weird, it must be really strange as well to get your head around the fact like, right, I'm not, I'm not fueling to go to sleep. I'm fueling because when I wake up, I then can't eat for ages. Exactly, yeah. Um, Did that mess with your body clock as well? Because the... The race itself at Milton Keynes was on, was it a 10 a.m. start? 10 a.m. start, And yeah. you'd had a, a week post-Ramadan to kind of reset, I suppose. Yeah. But you must have been trying to lie in a little bit in the morning. Oh, it was a lot of caffeine that got me through that last week. <laughs> and then about three days out, you want to yeah. stop just so you're not dehydrated come race day. Um, 
and then the morning of race was your again. morning race was <laughs> so, you, so you, good <laughs> <laughs> so good mo literally had everything measured out to precision and we were in the hotel and the best thing was that you went up to the hotel kitchen and were like, do you have a bigger bowl? Because <laughs> he was making, bearing in mind, I'd already emailed the hotel to be like, hi, do you have a microwave so my friend can make some porridge? And they were like, yeah, yeah, we've got, like, they were so nice. They had loads of porridge oh, available. Amazing. And Mo brought his own. <laughs> microwave? Which, no, brought, no, no. <laughs> I was going to. I, was I could 100% see you traveling with a microwave. With a microwave. <laughs> Just... Uh, Um, no you like turned up with your porridge measured out in a bag then you had like loads of powders as well measured out in a bag illegal powders though they they were good for it okay yeah so we we we, the only performance enhancement for your race day was the shoes was the shoes precisely yeah Yeah. (laughs) and the energy drink um yeah yeah, but (laughs) yeah no i had literally everything weighed out even my water that goes into my porridge weighed out so when i couldn't put it all in one bowl it was like i'd i'd lost because I had split into three different bowls and each one had to be like a certain level. <laughs> so we now understand right. how you broke the three hour mark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. this kind of attention it's specifics on everything. Yeah, yeah. It's like a little everything. science project and, in the morning. Yeah. And, and, and you know, a week on, how do you feel about it now reflecting back? Uh, it, honestly, still one of the best running experiences like uh, ever. Um, and I took a nice little trip away to get let leg, legs recover. Cause I knew if I stayed in the UK, I'd probably try and run a bit sooner than I needed to. Um, but I feel good. I feel recovered. I feel accomplished. And I'm just waiting to see what's next. Yeah, well, <laughs> he looks at <laughs> me nervously. Andy, <laughs> being like, what are you going to make uh, me do a, next? A, a bigger bowl? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Two microwaves. Yeah. Oh. Two hours 45? Hmm. Okay. Well, hmm. I, I think though that, that we, we've talked about time and improvement and all that sort of stuff. Like everyone that's listening out there will have their own goals. Mm-hmm. And we're here to support them, I guess, no matter what those goals are. Um, but is there anything that you've learned in this process for yourself that you would be the, the one thing that you would kind of impart to people listening for their, their own goals doesn't matter what the time is or whether it's just to run a little bit further or more regularly what would you say um I, i'm gonna be super cheesy and use our tagline but ultimately like the night before i said to myself if i don't cross the line in three hours then i ran i would have improved and i'm just gonna go ahead and repeat and that's like exactly what it is like don't put so much pressure or like you on yourself to achieve a specific time numbers are just like arbitrary ultimately yeah. as long as you're going out there enjoying a run you know, spending time with your loved ones. Um, That's oh, what yeah. I was going to pick up on because for me, the the best part of that entire day was that when after the race, the it was hard to put the edit together because when you cross the line, it looks like everyone's celebrating you straight away, but no one there knew your time. And I think that for me was the, the most like beautiful thing about the whole day was that your mum, your friends, like your paces, every single person, mm. as soon as you cross that line, were like, you are the best person ever. Like <laughs> yeah, we're gonna hold you why. up. It was just it you finished, yeah. like that yeah, was it. Yeah, it didn't matter. Like, yes, we were all here to try and help you break sub three, but ultimately, like I think your mum said it at the end, she was like, I'm just proud that all yeah. of these people have come out here. That's and my goal to get a support crowd as cool as Mo's. <laughs> I'll, I'll bring mine to you. Yeah, they were the <laughs> yeah most can I borrow in- it? Do you hire them out? <laughs> I, I mean, that would be worth it. They were the most incredible hype team I've ever seen. But I think that's where we'll wrap it up. And if anyone out there, this segues nicely into the next section. I'm going to skip over the news this week because I think Mo's was the only news that we all cared about. Oh. <laughs> um, and then we'll go on to the best section, which is, oh, not the best section today, but normally <laughs> the best section, which is the questions from people at home. But please do email in to podcast at the running channel.com if you would like to know how to go about your goals, whatever they are in running. We'd love to help you out. Right then, let's kick off with some questions, shall we? Yeah. The first question today is from someone excitedly called Rick. Why are oh, you look, so look at his little excited? Face. Why don't people say when they email us, why don't they say where they're from? Like, where's Rick from? Do we know, Sarah? You're, okay, in, char- well, that's you're a- in charge of the inbox. All right, everyone now email yeah. podcast at theruningchannel.com and say where you're from and yeah. give us a question. Well, are you Rick, happy now? Rick sounds like he's from Milton Keynes. So Rick from Milton Keynes. If you're not <laughs> from Milton Keynes, wherever you're from in the world, hi, Rick. <laughs> Anyway, he emailed, he emailed in to ask. Did you literally just say Milton Keynes? Because that's where Mo ran a marathon. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah that's right. It's like... Um, Good geography, mate. Do you, Good do you remember those childhood uh, word association games? No. Rick, <laughs> you Milton Keynes. <laughs> Rick's in denial. He's the same age as me. <laughs> Rick no, is uh, Oh my gosh. 50. We should do that with running one day. What? Like, you said... Okay, never mind. <laughs> never mind. I thought that was going to be a fun Mark. game. <laughs> Three days later. <laughs> right. He asks, does your warm-up routine change on race day? 
do you warm up differently for a marathon run versus a 5K or a marathon? I think people's warm up routines have changed so much recently because there's been so much contradictory uh, advice about what we should be doing for warm ups. If you went back 10 years ago, you'd see so many more people doing static stretch- stretching compared to now. Um, where are we going with this? Sarah, do you want to kick it off? Well, I'm going <laughs> to... Didn't, that, it sounded like you didn't know where you were going. Yeah, Rick was like, I don't know where I'm going, so I'm going to hand over to me. That's yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I, found, I find watching what other people do, like watching elites warm up, so interesting because my thought process up until I started working at the running channel was if I'm running and I need to go fast, no matter what the distance is, I need to move as little as possible until the start line. Yeah. And then I'm going to be able to run as fast as possible. However, this has been proven wrong recently on two counts. Number one, I was watching Philly Bowden on yeah. YouTube um, who's doing Copenhagen Marathon on the day that this podcast comes out or the day oh, after. Nice. So best of luck to her. And she recently did a 5K like all out yeah. run. And that day, I think she did that run as part of a session and then did some miles after, but she did a three mile like shake out on the day before that 5K run which I found interesting. Separate to the run or as the warm up for oh, Well, that's the same, that's the Separate. same distance. Yeah, but this is what I found interesting. So I think she did like a few miles as like warm up before the run, Yeah. then did that big run. And then at the weekend I did, I had a long run to do and I finished it off by running park run. And I felt so good in the first kilometer of park run. Like not, I wasn't running PB pace. But because you actually did a warm up. Yeah, because- Like I, this is some big revelation to the, on the running channel that we should do a warm up. No, but no, but I think, so when I think of warm ups, I think of doing like, not static stretches, but like dynamic stretches. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. I'm going to do walking lunges or feed the pigeons or yeah. whatever people don't call it who are in year nine <laughs> hockey. <Yeah. laughs> but like, I think of doing that, but actually, and if I was going to do a warm up, I'm always most likely to skip out there and then run for five to 10 minutes. Yeah. But actually the running to five to 10 minutes makes a huge difference when you start off because you haven't got any of that like stiffness going on. I yeah, think. I mean that's that's I'd say like vital if you can do it and you've got the time to do it. Don't use the first k or mile of yeah, your run the as, as, the, as the warm up. up. Yeah, like so I would have done uh, a few minutes of activations. Um, so kind of like the dynamic drills that you're talking about, but like low intensity ones. Um, then I would have uh, done when I was doing a training seriously. I'd have done a pro- close to five k warm up um, run. So like four k at least. So 20, 20 minutes of um, for, for what length of race so this this is for any well i might have cut that down slightly for race but i'm thinking about it as like any hard workout so like a okay. track workout hills threshold any of those sort of things i wouldn't do this whole warm-up thing for a long run on a sunday mm. i'd have just done the kind of activations and then um eased into my run so what for a 5k then compared to yeah if i was doing i mean i never raced a marathon as we all know so <laughs> um, i'm gonna come to Bo in a minute and find out about his warm-up <laughs> But for the shorter races that I did and any long workouts, bear in mind my workouts would have been 10K plus of volume. So it's the equivalent of warming up for a 10K race. I'd have done a few minutes of activations, 10 to 20 minutes of easy running. Then I'd have stopped because I'd have been changing my shoes to do a workout in a different pair of shoes or a race in a different pair of shoes. And then I'd have done some dynamic drills to kind of focus on the things the activations were kind of starting a little bit. But my body was now and my muscles are now warm enough to do some slightly more intense drills. So A skips, all the different types of skips um, into like increasingly dynamic, more powerful drills and then into strides. So like four times 100 meter strides. And then actually there's really good science behind something called V2 kinetics. So if you're running a short race in particular, and I'm thinking a mile, 5K, if you do 200 meters or for me, 30 seconds plus of, of effort at or slightly faster than the pace that you're going to run your race pace at last thing that you want to do because it feels like it's going to make you tired there's yeah there's really good science behind that prepping your body your vo2 kinetics which is how fast your body responses to responds to working at its maximum capacity um yeah to to do that anywhere in the half an hour before actually racing wow yeah sorry i went off on a geeky tangent but (laughs) no what did you do for your marathon um i think I think the one changes if you're going to run a marathon compared to like a 5k. Uh, ultimately, I don't want to add so much more mileage if I'm doing yeah. a marathon. Um, yeah. But you would still do the dynamics. You would still try and get your body warm. That's exactly what you want to be doing. Um, but I can't really remember. I just done like strides, uh, like dynamics. So strides. for a 5k, think, would you be doing some running as a warm up? I think so. If I'm going out yeah. for a, you know an all out 5k, I'd definitely yeah. add 
two to five K of running pre that five. Wow. K that's a lot. Um, I think a lot of people of like would be surprised up. by that. Two K mm. warm up for a five K race. Yeah. But yeah. I, I think that's, that's the right. Okay. Park. And I, I just, inter just to, to finish, I suppose to interestingly what Mo said there, he doesn't really remember what he did. I would say that's probably because you do a pretty similar warm up each time. And actually my advice would be to practice it. And therefore, yes, do the same warm up on race day that you've done in training. Um, so that you kind of, it you just take it off like, with that. Yeah. It like non-negotiable. I just do this every single time. Well, and it's subconscious then as well. You're going yeah. through the routine. It helps you settle into any, or get rid of any nerves and yeah. things like that. Like I remember ritual. on race day, that was one of the things you like handed over to the pacers as well. Yeah, <laughs> and they yeah, were just yeah. like, right, come on, mate, we're warming up now. <laughs> yeah. You're like, okay, off just we go. Just remove all of the, the necessity to think. Yeah. Okay, super. Next question comes from Stephen. We've no idea where he's from. <laughs> Stephen says, uh, if I'm going to choose shoes for marathon race day, I know the rule is nothing new on race day, but how far in advance and how much practice should be put into new shoes? Should I put 100 kilometers on them before a race or just one or two long runs? What's your advice for the best practice with shoes? This is an intriguing question because... 100 kilometers sounds like an awful lot to me. So what? how many kilometers should you be able to get out of a pair of shoes? If Well, that's totally different depending on your body type, the way that you run right. and the shoes that we're talking about. So that's an impossible question probably, but definitely more than 100 kilometers. When they look a bit knackered. Like yeah, well, you can, when the you grips can start to, yeah, if you are starting to get niggles and you don't yeah. normally, then that's a really good sign. But yeah, if the grip's worn through, if you've got holes in them, if, if like, you're collapsing inwards when you're running. Super uh, shoes are more likely to have less mileage in them than like your everyday trainers. Or yeah, your less easy durable, mileage. Right. for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I'd say what you're trying to avoid is blisters mainly. Yeah. Um, and, and knowing that. So you can probably take more of a risk with a brand new pair of a pair of shoes that you know suit your mechanics. There's probably two different questions here. So if you just got an up, if you just bought a brand new pair of shoes that you've worn out, then you probably don't need to wear them in as much if you're confident that they're gonna give you the support and not have not give you any kind of mechanical issues. So really, you're just breaking them in potentially to make sure you don't get blisters. Actually, um, so it's or no hot spots or anything like that. Oh, okay, okay. So it's actually you, you wouldn't need to do a hundred kilometers. Yeah, you those, could yeah. just do a few miles in them as yeah. long as they uh, fit your feet and it all works really well. Yeah, yeah. But if you're taking a gamble on a pair of shoes that you've never worn before, then something like 50 to 100 kilometers is probably pretty sensible to make sure that you you're not having any issues and that your those shoes are gonna do you the a positive service on race day but then you don't want to go too far in them because then you're starting to degrade the foam and then all of the stuff that you've bought them for is, is going to be less effective one thing i'd say as well is that if you are testing like a brand new pair of shoes and you're in a marathon training block there is nothing more gutting than heading out on a long run in a fresh pair of shoes and having to cut it short because they're not working so yeah. like always do a test on a in like a very short distance yeah build yeah. up to that or even like as you're if you're doing track workouts every week break in the new pair of shoes as your track warm up and then swap out to double check that they work for you and then practice your long run in them yeah I've also got a little bit of a cheat on this because obviously we get a few shoes every uh -oh. now and again. So there's actually a website called runrepeat.com. Yeah. Uh, do you guys know that? Yeah. Yeah. And where basically you put in the, the type of shoe that you've got now that works with your feet really well and they match it to other shoes. So actually wearing them in, you wouldn't need as long because you'd be buying a very similar shoe. Yeah, this is one thing that actually loads of shops have started doing now. So back in the day, shops used to categorize running shoes by brand and they now categorize by like type because it's far yeah. more of like carbon shoes, everyday shoes. Yeah, a proper like expert in a, in a local running store would be amazing. You'd be like, I've really liked these shoes a few years ago. Yeah. They don't really exist anymore. What could I run in now? And they yeah. might actually say to you, a totally different brand. They might come back with like, well, these actually will feel similar. Running shoes have changed so fundamentally in the last three or four years that if you do have an older pair of shoes, then it, it'd be quite an overwhelming right now. So any tool that helps with that is a positive thing. Yeah. Or you can do the classic, go on to uh, a secondhand online retailer and just buy 10 pairs <laughs> before <laughs> the update comes out. I know yeah, people not second have done but that. like ones that where they've got yeah. like, you know, they're like half price or 60% yeah, yeah, like yeah. off. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Stockpile. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and recycling your trainers is a whole other podcast yeah. coming to you soon. We've said that different shoes will last different people for different amounts of time, but there is still life in those shoes, just potentially not at the performance end and they yeah. could help from a charity perspective. So you can, you can also turn them into kids playgrounds. <laughs> That's what you can do. Yeah, you now. can. And running can. tracks. And running tracks. Yeah. Very exciting. But anyway, before we go off on a tangent, you yeah. have been listening to the Running Channel podcast with Rick, me, Mo, Andy. I'm gonna... doing this at the end now. Yeah. Thanks so much, Mo, for coming in and joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. No worries. And we will see you next time. Yeah, if we can fit any more chairs in. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh my gosh, should we just add one extra person yeah. each week? Who should we get next week? Email in. Yeah. Maybe Kirsty from Location, Location, Location will turn up. 